Yeah, hello dear Collapse and Fastverse user community. This is Sebastian, I'm the main author of Collapse and the Fastverse and uh, I just wanted to present to you a very short tutorial where I want to talk about a new feature uh, which I introduced very recently in all Collapse versions 1.91 and upwards uh, and that is uh, that you can now globally set um, defaults for the missing value removal and the number of threads arguments. And I just want to talk a little bit about that. So I'm using, yeah, Collapse 1.93 here, but all versions above 1.91 have this feature. And it essentially boils down to this function called set collapse, which is now a uh, part of the package, which allows you to set um, defaults for the number of threads and the missing value uh, removal argument. And there's also a function called get collapse, which you can use to uh, retrieve the defaults you set for this argument. So the defaults are as they always were, the number of threads is one and missing value removal is true. Um, but we can set a different default now. And um, yeah, you can see that this is now um, yeah, set here. So how is this implemented? Um, there's an environment called dot up in the package namespace, which uh, basically stores those defaults. So, so you can actually see the environment if you get it uh, from, the, from the namespace, you search for it, you can see it here. Um, so yeah, you can see um, it, ha it has th those two values, um, but the, the environment itself is not accessible by the user, um, but uh, you can set values and get values using these um, functions. So just briefly, why did I do this? Uh, in this way, using an environment, um, yeah, as the, the, the main reason is just performance um, because um, I mean, you can of course uh, set, use something, use an options uh, call. So I could, I could do collapse and threads equal to four, for example, and then uh, retrieve that using get option like that. Um, but yeah, this uh, get option call has a, has a cost of about one microsecond and um, if you do it using an environment in the package namespace, it has a cost of a couple of nanoseconds. So it's, uh, it's about a factor 10 uh, performance improvement. So I, so I wanted to keep the cost of this as, as little as possible. And that's why I did it this way. Now there might be something confusing here and that is that there is indeed this option and also um, the option for uh, to set the NA remove argument. Um, but these options are only there for different startup behavior. So if I would um, restart R here, and um, so, so I have this option still, oh no, I don't have it, but yeah, if I set this option now and I, yeah, load collapse again here as part of the fast verse, um, then you will see um, that I, I've set a different default. So if you want to configure your R session using an R profile file or something like that, uh, you can put this option there and also for the missing value removal and um, to have a different startup behavior. So what is important here is that F, once collapse is loaded, these options have no effect. So I can set something different here now, but um, it has no effect. So, so I need to use um, this function to set um, yeah, these defaults interactively once collapse is loaded. Um, yeah, so, so regarding the um, performance advantage, uh, yeah, I think it is obvious that it's, it's faster um, with in multi-thread mode. So uh, here I just created a vector of, um, what is it, 10 million random normals. And um, yeah, you can see that we get some significant performance improvements over the single thread, a threaded mode. 
Uh, and of course you have um, doing it this way um, you, you have flexibility so, so you can still have single threaded execution um, in, even though your, your default setting is multi-threaded. Um, another note here, it does make sense to set the missing value removal to false if your data has no um, missing values because in quite some functions this would be faster so it's it was the mean it's not really very visible it's almost the same um, execution speed but um, for example if you take a grouped computation uh, it, it's already a difference um, and yeah similarly with the sum and a number of other functions um, yeah so so again if I I can set both of these defaults and then then the default here is um, yeah also to, to not uh, remove missing values. Now, what is uh, important and what I um, what I've seen actually in quite some code using Collapse, and what I wonder about is, um, yeah, you you should be careful, especially with multi-threaded defaults, to um, to iterate over these functions. Um, and like, I, I don't say this is necessarily bad. Like, this is this is okay, but. But usually you um, you get um, a better performance if you um, use these functions just the way that they are meant to be used. Uh, for example, just uh, calling fmean on the data frame directly because um, uh, it can do some additional optimizations here. For example, uh, if the no number of columns is greater than the number of threads, it will would multi-thread this across columns uh, rather than at the sub-column L uh, and yeah, speaking about that, um, I mean, there's obviously a reason why these functions are uh, S3 generic and why they have a vector matrix data frame method, group data frame method, and they have these input arguments for groups and weights and so on. And and that is essentially so they, uh, because these functions were not meant to be uh, iterated over essentially they're, they're, they're meant to be called once and uh, for, for a certain operation across columns or across groups so that they can um, carry out the, the entire weight lifting at the sea level uh, and that is what makes collapse fast right because R is an interpreted language and everything we do in R uh, when we have to call functions a lot of times um, that, that makes R slow so Basically, in properly written collapse code, there is a no need at all for um, any kind of apply or I don't know if you're coming from the tidyverse so per like functions or or something like that. that, that there's no need for that because um, all the iteration that that happens in collapse ca can be done at, at the, can be done effectively at the C level, and that of course also applies like if you if you do like sometimes, of course, there are exceptions, like if you want to do something across rows. Um, but um, but yeah, you should look around also like in the, in the fast verse, for example, in the kit package, we have these parallel functions which you can use to co efficiently compute uh, statistics across data frame rows. And, and there's the matrix stats package, which you can use if you, if you have matrices. Um, so there's quite a, a lot of ways or a lot of options you have to vectorize operations at the, yeah, using compiled code rather than um, using um, yeah, an R-level function. Like for example, what, what this does is it essentially turns this data frame into a matrix first, then splits the matrix row-wise and then applies each function um, to, 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 to the list of rows. So, so it's um, just much slower than, than the parallel mean that you find in the kit package. Um, now, regarding that, there's also, of course, um, many of you use collapse together with data table. And um, in general, I, I do, do not recommend to use collapse functions inside data table, uh, because data table is, a first of all, it's a multi-threaded library and it also applies its own optimizations um, but it only um, 
applies those optimizations to base R functions, right? So, so if you have a base R function here, this mean gets replaced with a, a grouped mean in inside the data table, whereas F mean, which is a grouped mean, uh, but it, it is not recognized as such by the data table package. So, so actually this mean gets applied to every group inside every column and and now you have some multi-threaded defaults so so that can actually be, da be dangerous although um i think for the for this particular case so so i mean here, here you can see um like the, the mean actually has of course a grouped implementation in c so, so this doesn't get called if you do this right what you what you what you get in the end after after the method dispatch and of course the uh, setting options interact uh, actively adds to the execution speed a little bit you you get the, the normal method with a, with the multi threading uh, here um, so um, yeah but, uh, actually I think you you're also you're also covered a bit because I think yeah, exactly. I think below one hundred thousand observations, you you don't get multi-threading. The, the 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 number of threads is automatically set to one. So uh, yeah, I guess this wouldn't multi-thread in each group. But um, I, yeah, different functions have different defaults and also different ways of multi-threading. So um, in general, I I don't recommend iterating over these function, but but just using them the way they're meant to be used, like. You can just group the data frame and pass it directly to the function, right? Using the group DF method, so the the whole iteration essentially can be done by the function, or you use Collab, which which essentially does the same, right? It just knows that this is a fast statistical function and it calls the data frame method. So, yeah, in, in general, um, like I think this is a nice feature. I think you can really. Um, yeah, ease your life. You can you can um, set defaults and and still change things interactively. But um, yeah, it, it comes with a bit additional responsibility. And of course, um, you should understand that um, collapse. Yeah, is basically a, a vectorization toolkit. It allows you to do almost everything you want to do uh, at the C level, and you should also stick to that. So 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 you should not try to iterate a lot with these functions uh, at the R level because because that's just slow and um, yeah can can also um, yeah be or, or cause some unintended side effects especially if you have uh, a multi-thread default so that that's about all I wanted to say.